Hi everyone, myself Ajay, I am a Salesforce certified expert, CTO, Cloud Analogy and in this video I am going to explain uh, what should be our deployment strategy. Like once we are, have developed a particular piece of code or we have done any changes or we have done any bug fixes, then what should be our strategy uh, to deploy it in production like to move the code or the changes done from sandbox to production so recently in one of my project I faced the following situation uh, we were supposed to uh, do a small change in a trigger we were supposed to change the string value uh, from demo to trial the code change hardly took us one minute because it was a simple uh, string value change in the code anyone any developer uh, can go ahead and do that and the client was aware of the changes and time it will take so we estimated the work as a two hour work including the code changes analysis of its impact and deployment and amazingly when the developer finished deploying the code changes it took him two days almost 16 plus man hours and it was a big surprise so we sat down and we started discussing like what were the problems now let me list out the problems he actually faced and this is a real world scenario so the code coverage of the existing trigger in which we did our changes was 12 percent only and our company best practice in cloud analogy we follow 85 percent minimum as the code coverage which should be co completed and salesforce itself does have a practice of at least uh, more than 0% code coverage for trigger and for all the other classes it should have at least uh, around 75% so yes it's hard to believe that the existing trigger was having less code coverage and we were we faced that challenge other problem which we faced was existing test class were failing in production amazingly never no one ever saw that and subsequently when we found out like what could be the reason why the test classes are failing in production because uh, it's hard to imagine again like how a failed test class can be deployed in production a simple answer is there is a change which is done in production obviously after deployment of the code which has which is causing the test classes system.assert to fail now what all could be those test changes what, what all could be those uh, configurational changes there can be several there can be a validation rule which might have got created by some other developer or admin there can be another process builder which could have been created so there could be several reasons uh, why a test class even after deployment might fail someday another reason which we found Another problem which we found in fact was trigger in production was different than in sandbox and it's really difficult in such situation. The problem is actually it is possible when we have multiple sandboxes, we have multiple teams build, building different features or possibly working on the same data model obviously like if, if we have two teams uh, they, those are working on the same object opportunity they might write different trigger for that particular object and this was a serious thing and no one ever noticed that the trigger act code actually written was which was there in production was never pushed into the other sandboxes now that's that's a challenging thing other problem which we faced was deployment had a narrow slot of two hours during which end client were not working so again we need to plan accordingly and we need to make sure that all the bad jobs which might get affected in the back end should be stopped and uh, it uh, uh, and only then our code could be deployed so we sat down we took the problem uh, and we started analyzing like what should be our code move strategy and pretty quickly we came up with couple of steps and as soon as more and more projects came in and we sat down and we found different issues we enhanced the code move strategy 
and this is the kind of uh, uh, a more mature code move strategy which we have in front of you so, and we have summarized it in different steps like step one check the existing production code coverage by Renault text so we should absolutely make sure that in production whatever is the code we should uh, do a run all test before deployment and we should find out like okay this code is breaking and there might be any test class failures so we should report it to the manager to the end client step three list out the bad jobs running in production just to make sure that which all bad jobs might need to be um, deactivated for a certain time period while your deployment is going on similarly in step four uh, we also made a mandatory step like we will be comparing the code between production and sandbox before working on it if any difference is found report it to your end client manager and that's again one of the mandatory steps so another pretty strong step is make sure if you are deploying any apex code its code coverage is above 85 percent it's not only about your um, coding experience to be happy we should make sure that other developers who might do a deployment might should also get a slack of uh, a time uh, basically a code coverage added code coverage from the existing code base so that even if his or uh, their code coverage is low still they can push the code in certain cases in certain conditions if something is breaking or something is failing other thing is we made sure that to use change set for small size deployment or with less components and keeping the change set names in a well-defined order now this is the problem which we faced internally and I have seen several developers doing the same mistake like they don't name or put description on the chain sets it's a bad practice we should always put name well-defined name with the month detail and the detail of the feature uh, which in which feature we are pushing to production and so on uh, the step seven uh, which is again uh, defined in several smaller steps is while deployment we should make out a strategy like okay first step should be the users profiles and other uh, mandatory things which forms the company detail should be moved first then the second step should be the data model as soon as you are done with the users the profiles and OWD you should move the data model and after the moving the data model you might also again have to work on the OWD organization wide defaults but it's it's a good step that we have the profiles and users before data model on the third step we need to make sure that uh, the code changes gets pushed in now be very careful while pushing in the code changes because the data model already exists and your code changes should go ahead correctly and if it is failing it might absolutely be some fields missing some custom setting missing some label or something missing which is being accessed by the code and the last but not the least are the rest of the configurational changes like uh, the validation rules workflow rules templates and further on so that's a well-defined way and at the very end do remember to test the working model like once you have deployed uh, make sure that you have also tested it so that it doesn't bring any surprises to the end user and that's a very good thing to do step 8 obviously deactivate the necessary bad jobs and validation rule before deployment if they are active and they are colliding with the same object the same code it won't allow your code to be deployed in production step 9 is obviously make sure that deployment is in right time slot when the end users are not working <laughs> this had happened a couple of times with us like uh, I have seen like one developer uh, I asked him like okay was the work done yesterday but he, uh, he didn't did it so he told me that okay yeah it was done and what he did was like after our talk he went ahead and just went ahead and did the deployment but at that time the client was uh, working on that time so it might bring 
couple of surprises if there are page layout changes or anything related to the UI if you're doing that to be very careful make sure that you are doing it in a well planned manner validate deploy and if possible test the deployment in production and ask the respective feature manager or the end client to test it in production and report a feedback so that you are aware of all the surprises now I have come up with this um, list of um, features for the different ways by which we can do so first of all ant migration and eclipse are more or less the same thing okay but eclipse gives us an added advantage of uh, coding as well so you can see that features like code comparison can be absolutely done on eclipse and the rest of the things are pretty common with ant migration in most of the cases we would recommend chain set not to be used uh, if we have the code access if we have the uh, metadata api access uh, then we should go ahead and use ant migration in eclipse i think um, following this these strategies you can absolutely uh, make sure that you have a happy deployment period we call it a happy happy final project stage so and that might help uh, i hope you would like this video and uh, subscribe to our channel as well and now let's jump start to the demonstration part of deployment scenarios in this demonstration you'll get to know how to move code from sandbox to production so let's start As I am going to type in chain sets under quick find, you can see that I'll be able to get two options like one is outbound chain set and another one is inbound chain sets. In the outbound chain set, I'll go ahead and click hit on new and I'll have to type in a name of the chain set. In this particular case, I'm going to type in as test and a description. Just remember that that name, chain set name should have some relevant meaning and it should denote what all components I'm going to add in. So as you can see, I can go ahead and select the components, Apex classes, triggers and other different components. As I select one particular component and I hit on add and the relevant dependent components, all I need to do is ensure that all the dependencies which you have worked upon or the dependencies in which the code changes are made are supposed to be added in the chain set and uploaded so as soon as we hit on upload then we are going to see that the upload process has already begun now it generally takes a particular set of time interval in order to upload a particular chain set and a chain set gets uploaded only when there is a sandbox connection between a particular sandbox A to other sandbox B or a sandbox A to a production or in this particular and add the missing components or add those components which were modified due to the failure and you can again push it to production in production make sure once the validation is successful only then go ahead and hit the deployment button and I think that would be good enough to make sure that any particular chain set gets deployed do contact us if you have any work any 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 kind of task required or any suggestion uh, do contact us and let us know if you want anything uh, from us from our team uh, we have a 10 plus uh, Salesforce expert team so we can help us uh, we can help uh, you all with any kind of work thank you have a nice day